take some time to lose yourself Buy your ticket at the station Take some time to lose yourself Britain is a railway nation Promise us you'll make a start Staying behind for the week of part Standing by the railway line You'll get there if your train's on time Take some time to lose yourself Buy your ticket at the station Take some time to lose yourself Britain is a railway nation Under the skies, the rain cloud bed Over the hills and in your head Traffic. Hey everybody, welcome back. Psychedelic here. Coming to you on a Sunday afternoon, evening. Been a really nice day outside. Uh, just a beautiful, perfect, breezy spring day. I spent like a couple hours outside just walking around the lake here in town and spent a good hour doing that. Just couldn't be any better to set the mood for today's video. <laughs> Especially what we're going to talk about here today. So I got three records to cover. These are all from online. And one came in the mail yesterday, and the two I shared on the live stream this past Friday, so you might have caught wind of that a little bit. This one that came in the mail yesterday, uh, this is one that I've been trying to hunt down for about a year or so now. I've always known about the record, but I never dove into it or invested very much uh, since this past year. And I didn't really want to go the original pressing route. I mean, they're kind of fetching 300 bucks now. I just wanted to find the unofficial reissue, so by that, it's on Magic Box, which you can't purchase any of them on Discogs because they're unofficial. And couldn't find any, any time I do like a web search, they just always turn up with dead ends. And just this past week, I just happened to check on eBay and a copy finally popped up and I was like, all right, let's get her. And it's in the US too. So I picked up on Mark Bright. Briarly, welcome to the Citadel. I feel like I need to say this in a British accent. Mark Briarly, welcome to the Citadel. This came out in 1968 originally on the CBS label. This is his first LP. He had a second LP as well called Hello, which was also on CBS. I think before this he had like an EP out as well. And this is one of those, you know, Great Britain sort of folk singer-songwriters back in the day that got their start in coffee shops and you know kind of doing these low-key kind of clubs uh, with people from you know that would eventually go on to Fairport Convention and amongst many other several folk outings and I don't know a whole lot about his backstory I think to this day he still performs a little bit here and there and I guess back in like 2017 he performed the whole album live with a sort of like a reunion of sorts and man this record this is one of the best one of the best i've heard in a long time back when i first heard it uh last year uh this gets like a four and a half out of five star for me which is pretty high up there so if i had to classify this one this is definitely fitting into those chamber folk singer songwriter sort of baroque pop kind of bags with you know just a very light acid folk Thing going on here as well but with the instrumentation there's like a cello player and a trumpeter and I, it might be a brother and sister henry lothar and claire lothar i don't know if it's a brother and sister team but they basically kind of flushed the album out a little bit and it's got some drums and electric bass and spots and then some are pretty stripped down as well but great mixing job i don't know where the sources are apparently you know for this magic box repress but I imagine maybe it came from the 2014 CD that came out I couldn't really tell you but sounds great to me I know some people are a little fishy on the unofficial I mean of course I want to own the sounds and but it kind of sucks at the same time that they get ripped off but then again used copies aren't going I mean the used copies we're paying for aren't going towards the artist either so uh, you can see it however you want to see it, but I'm just so glad to own the music. This record's fantastic. I have a couple other on Magic Box, Euclid, and uh, Keith Christmas I picked up recently. But this is like top tier, man. Um, it's got a little bit of those jazz touches a little bit on here with the inclusion of the cello and the trumpet. It's got some kind of nice uh, drum fills going on and 
there's kind of this funky aspect to it in spots as well. Tracks like, um, I think my favorite might be Over the Hills, the title track, Take Me For A Ride On Your Airplane. Really good songs, and it just kind of has this continuous flow, almost like a concept record, but not quite. And good lyrics, too. It almost comes off across like, sort, imagine, you know, a 15th century minstrel appeared into CBS Studios and recorded this. It's a little bit on that kind of bend. It's almost like a poet gone folk kind of route. Uh, very much like Duncan Brown, his first album. Got a little insert here, got a photo there, and got a little press release from CBS and Melody Maker Magazine. Let you guys read that. And like I said, man, uh, clarity on this, the mixing wise, this press sounds great. It would be nice to have better liner notes, of course, but you know how it is. Comes with a CD here. Uh, it's got some bonus tracks. I think it's from previous recordings, I do believe, so. Nice little insert there. So yeah, Mark Brierley, welcome to the Citadel. This is, this should be a gem. This should be really heralded pretty big. And maybe it is, I maybe I just don't know, or I'm not hearing a lot of people discuss this one, at least on the YouTube side of things. I don't know how many copies of this repress were pressed, but um, pick it up if you see it. You know, I had a hard time searching it out online, and I even asked the shop in Omaha if he had a copy, because that's where I got the Keith Christmas from, and they said it never came through, so um, really glad to snatch this up. This was definitely a nice splurge last week. And speaking of records that have been needing a repress, this is one that um, initially got on... CD at first. It's a long lost demo LP. And usually I check the RSD list and this came out on RSD. This one totally slipped under the radar I feel like for a lot of people uh, including me. And this is one nice surprise here that we got from the Erevons Resurrection. Uh, this came out on Euclid Records for Record Store Day. And I think back in 2003, I want to say, it had its first CD issue. And uh, get a little shot here. Nice quality. Uh, I mean, the sleeve's not the best, but the record's very thick. Sounds great. Get a shot of the uh, hype here. Yeah, very thick vinyl. Let's see if I can get it out here. I don't know if you can tell how thick that is, but you know, they got a big backstory too. Um, I forget some details, the finer details, but they're formed out of St. Louis, Missouri, of all places. And they sound just like the Beatles, man. The Fab Four was definitely their inspiration. And these guys were like teenagers when they recorded this over in the EMI Studios, which was now Abbey Road Studios. But they were rubbing shoulders with the Beatles, I mean, on and off throughout the year or so that they were over there. Uh, they recorded this there and released a couple singles, uh, formerly on the Parlophone label. Uh, I think their first single was not included on here, The Train. But the first two tracks, man, sell this release by, by far. World of You, just masterclass pop writing. And then the second track, Resurrection. Uh, the lead guy on here, Tom Hartman, he he uh, listened to the Beatles in the studio while they were recording like demos for Across the Universe during like their White Album period, and he listened to it one glimpse in the studio and uh, reinterpreted that what he heard and made it into Resurrection that track, and you can definitely tell it's very heavily influenced by that track. And uh, yeah, this was recorded in 1969. Uh, you got uh, Norman Smith producing it, you know, who did the Pink Floyd. And they even mentioned uh, somewhere online, there's been articles that coming out since this release talking about how, you know, they got to meet the Pink Floyd, the Hollies. Reportedly, Hendrix was in the studio as well. 
around that time period. I mean, just imagine you're rubbing shoulders with your your cultural icons um, and just to having to record in London from St. Louis of all places. It's kind of a crazy backstory. And uh, there's more to it online, so definitely recommend checking this one out, especially if you love the Beatles. Um, it's also engineered by Alan Parsons, Jeff Emmerich, who did the Beatles. And I would say, you know, half of this is pretty strong. There are some moments, though, that it's like they're channeling that Beatles thing really heavily, where it's almost a little distracting for me. With tracks like Say Georgia. It's a little bit like um, Oh Darling, I feel like. But like I said, man, there's some good tracks on here. Some like seaside folk pop kind of bags. Uh, Everything's All Right is a nice slice of sunshine pop. But just considering all things, their backstory and the first time being impressed on vinyl. Well, it's actually the second time. There is a bootleg out there early on, but being sort of authorized officially, you know, it's, it's it was definitely a nice surprise for me enough to pick it up, so. Really glad I did. Okay, and then on to this last one. Again, we're very much circulating around the stripped down folk scene, the very gentle, soft spots here. And this is one I actually picked up from Permanent Records on Instagram. They're selling stuff on there almost daily. And this was definitely my, the best price I've seen for this so far. It's a solid VG copy, but for 12 bucks, I, uh, I was sold on this one, and this is Lambert and Nuttycomb, their first album here, At Home. This is on a &M. Got a gatefold here. This is where they recorded it at, sort of in their cozy living space there in Sausalito. And I love the cover art too, you know, the whole garage door, garage door effect there. Uh, love this one. So this is very much stripped down acoustic folk. Just two voices and two guitars. Uh, contemporary folk here. You got three producers on board. One of them being Chad Stewart of Chad and Jeremy. They brought him in initially because they thought maybe they would, you know, put a little orchestral work, kind of flush it out a little bit. But at the end of the day, they all kind of decided that maybe it's just best to just leave it stripped down and intimate as it is yeah they were originally signed on to electra records at the time but i guess that maybe they sold it to a m because they thought it was maybe a better deal or something and by the time this album concluded you know dennis lambert was going through some like heroin addiction and it, they made one other album after this but it was kind of kicking in and eventually dissolved the group and they actually went on a six-month tour european tour with canned heat according to Craig Nettycomb here, who did a video interview here on YouTube, if you look it up. That's kind of where I got all this information from. The guy that's been doing these interviews, um, he's interviewed some cool people, a guy from The New Dawn, uh, Peter Daltrey of Kaleidoscope, uh, the fella from These Trails. A lot of great people he's interviewed, so i got to get the uh, link maybe or something down the road so you guys can check it out. Yeah, like I said, very intimate, very gentle, very patient record. It's very good, like, morning listen, opening with a track called Morning. And I think my other favorite tracks are on side two here, Putting Myself Together Again. They do a cover of Mr. Bojangles. But my other favorite, Clover, the closing track, is really good as well. Um, yeah, solid VG copy. Plays pretty well. It's a very quiet record, so you want to have a decent copy here and this oftentimes gets compared to like Nick Drake so if you guys are into those sort of things and you don't want to blow all that money on Nick Drake this is a, a great secondary choice here so I think that's all I have to say about this one um, yeah I really enjoyed the video interview got, got a lot of details on, on the background of this record and they also recorded that particular record in that mobile truck that was driving through California. I think the Rolling Stones may have performed on that. It was like a mobile truck, mobile studio truck. They would drive to different locations and they ran microphones like through their living room. And it's a pretty cool story, man. So with that said, I do have more records to share. I did take a road trip 
this past Saturday to St. Joseph, Missouri. Actually never been there before. I did come out with some goodies, a couple private press things that weren't worth anything, but I do also have a couple things that I already have in the collection that I bought, but they were so good of prices I couldn't leave them behind. So we'll see if I sell them or flip them for something in the shop because my shop has gotten some things in too recently. So looking forward to uh, snatching those up. Keep on wheeling and dealing out here. Uh, but that's all I got for now. So these are the online pickups and stay tuned for an Acid Archives hopefully this week. See if I can sneak that in. I got I got actually three lined up coming coming down the road. So thanks again. And we shall see you soon.